So it's possible to play Mugen on your Android device. We need to install the program called WinLater. Do this by heading to the link in the description. Be sure to also download the .obb file as well. After the download is done, we'll first install WinLater, then run the program once. Let's go ahead and do that now. Now let's open WinLater. Click Allow so WinLater can gain access to the files on your device. You should see the application close suddenly with this error message. At this point, WinLater has automatically created the folder we need to put the .obb file in. Back in the Downloads folder, we'll use the cut command on the .obb file. Navigate back to your main storage folder. Go to Android, then obb, then com.winlater, and move the file here. Now WinLater should successfully run on your device. When we double click it, we should see the installing OBB image window. Let's change gears and head to our computer. We need to modify Mugen a bit before we transfer it to our Android device. I'm personally using the game Hyper Dragon Ball Z, but any Mugen build should work in this case. First, head over to your Mugen.cfg file and open it. Make sure that your game is in the standard definition resolution and preferably 4x3. At this point in time, higher resolutions will lower the frames per second. So I'm going to leave it here at 640x480. In terms of your controls, to make things easier, I've included a controller profile that you can download in the description. You do, however, still have to manually edit your controls in Mugen to match your WinLater input settings or an input profile you've imported. So now go ahead and run Mugen. In this tutorial, I plan to use an X input arcade stick on my Android tablet and when later translates controller inputs into keyboard presses. So we need to edit the controls as if we're using a keyboard. For context, I'm using Betterhand's default key layout, except I'm switching the XYZ button position for ABC in order to mirror a classic six button Street Fighter layout with the punches being on top and the kicks being underneath. With this in mind, we'll sequentially set up each button according to the layout. Head to Options, Input Config, then Key Config. Start by pressing F1. Up will be W, down will be S, and so on and so forth following the classic WASD layout. A will be J, B for K, L, U, I, O, and Start will be H. We're also going to fill out player 2 by pressing F2. Up button on your keyboard, down, left, right, and the buttons will use the numpad. If you're using any variation of a keyless keyboard, then you can optionally use a built-in on-screen keyboard. Click options and check turn on numeric keypad. So one on the numpad, which will be the end button on a typical numpad. Then two and or the down arrow. Three, four, five, six. And finally, we'll use the enter button for P2 start. After that's done, hit the escape button twice and save your settings. If you plan to use my or another person's input profile, then go ahead and download it now. At this point, you should have your Mugen game along with your input profile with an ICP extension. Create a folder called WinLater. Inside this folder, create a folder called Profiles. Drag your Mugen game into the WinLater folder and move your input profile into the Profiles window. At this point, let's connect our Android device to our computer via the USB cable and copy the WinLater folder onto our downloads folder on the Android device. After that's done, we'll disconnect the USB cable to free up your USB-C port and use the same port to plug in the gamepad. Now let's run WinLater. Press the cross on the top right to make a new container. I'm gonna name this Mugen. Make sure the screen size is the same orientation as your Mugen game. In my case, a four x three orientation is good. Using the Turnip graphics driver, for a DX wrapper, DXVK 1.10 works best for me. Turn on Show FPS. I like to choose the most powerful GPU available on the list as a GPU name. Video memory is going to be turned all the way up. Click DX Components and change Direct Sound to Native Windows. Press the check symbol on the bottom right to create the container. Now click the Settings icon at the top left. Hit Input Controls. You should see the name of the controller that you plugged in under external controllers if you're using one. Click import profile. Navigate to your profiles folder and select the profile you downloaded. And now we're good to go. You can see here that the profile has been recognized. Click the menu icon on the top left, hit containers, click the three dots to the right, 
and select Run. Once we're in the container, hit the back arrow and select Input Controls. Then select the profile we just imported and click OK. Every time you start a container, you must repeat this step in order to use your preferred profile. So now open the D drive. Open your Mugen folder and double click the executable file. Hyper Dragon Ball Z. Oh, oh took you long enough. Round one, fight. There we have it. We are now running a full moving game on an Android device. A few bookkeeping points to make. If you're getting under 60 frames per second or even under 30, then that's completely normal. One later is still in its early stages in terms of development, but hopefully subsequent releases will see an improvement in speed. If one later ever gets hung up on the starting up screen or your game is unusually slow, then close the application. Head to settings, go to battery and device care, memory, and hit clean now. You can also edit your Mugen settings within one later itself by using two fingers to right click and then selecting edit. Once it's open, you can again use two fingers to drag in order to navigate the text file. And finally, you can make a shortcut to the executable file using this method in order for it to appear on your desktop, giving you easier access. Share the video or subscribe to my channel if you found this video helpful. Leave a comment for any questions or head to my discord and you can ask me there as well. And thanks for watching.